Hey guys, welcome back to the Jones Zone, and today I'm going to tell you why I think Dragon Ball Z is one of, if not, the best animes ever. Okay, we're going to start with world building. Now, this is debatable, but I'd say that the world building in Dragon Ball Z is very unusual. You have, for the most part, a world that's very lush, like Earth, during the late ages of the dinosaurs or something like that. Everything is lush. And tropical. You have islands and deserts and a few places that are pretty cold. But yeah, you, you have a lot of wholesome features which are very appealing to kids. Because I know I thought dinosaurs were cool when I was growing up and I still do, but you just don't have the world building of planet Earth here. You have other planets and dimensions. Yes, you have dimensions too. These are things that you would usually see in like, you know, your typical like sci-fi uh, space operas. You have godly planes like King Kai's planet and Lord Beerus's world. And uh, these things come in the form of, you guessed it, planets. Um, some of which I don't think are actually reachable by space travel. Like you have to find other ways to get to them like using instant transmission uh, some kind of special craft, something like that, that is spiritual. Next, you have the characters, and this is actually a part of the world-building architecture. Worlds are obviously going to be textured with characters, guys. Uh, but never before have I seen a franchise or an anime that has so many unique kinds of races and characters. And uh, in DBZ, you have, I mean, you have animal people. Uh, humans, subhumans, superhumans, metahumans, and not to mention the various alien races and other humanoids in the universe of DBZ. And that's just another big point. You have universes. Not just the native galaxy in which the main characters live, but you have other universes, and then you have their main characters and their stories in there, and so on. With different timelines and things like that. Yes, timelines as well, guys. Each universe, specifically seven, has different timelines. And the other universes, I'm sure, have their timelines also. So what? Yeah. But anyways, so this means that DBZ, you know, I'd say the, the entire DBZ uh, universe, it is larger uh, than that of Star, of Star Wars, for sure. And... Uh, if I had to choose to keep one or destroy the other, I might have to say goodbye to Star Wars, which is another franchise I really like. Next is the storyline, which is centered around Goku, starting with his adventures in Dragon Ball, and then his adult adventures in Dragon Ball Z. Goku's story, to me, it seems very analogous to Superman. You know, he's an alien called a Saiyan from Planet Vegeta. But the true origins of their race... It can be traced to a home world they inhabited before they invaded what would become Planet Vegeta. But anyways, Planet Vegeta is, it's like a vassal world, which is a part of Lord Frieza's vast intergalactic empire. But as for Frieza, now, Frieza is the emperor of Universe 7. And I think he's the best antagonist in the DBZ and DBS franchise. Next, what I'd like to touch on in the Dragon Ball Z universe is the spiritual dynamic, which is heavily inspired by Eastern mythologies and cultures. There's a mix of Hindu and Buddhist uh, spiritual concepts at play here, like the universal basis of energy is Qi, which is the Japanese interpretation of Qi. Now, depending on the amount of Qi you can generate is going to determine how powerful you are, or AKA your power level. So, in order to fire an energy blast, you need Qi. To power up, you need Qi control. To fly at high speeds, you need a key, and you need to be able to think happy thoughts just to fly. This is not magic, and everyone can generate it. Next, you have like a hierarchy. There are divine beings called Kais, who are basically gods. King Kai is a god, technically. Then you have the Grand Kai, Supreme Kai, and all the directional Kais, uh, north, south, east, west, etc. And they all govern creation. Then you have the gods of destruction, uh, one for each universe. Lord Beavers comes to mind. 
and then above them are the most powerful beings in the universe, which, why, well, in the multiverse, I guess you could say, in the universe of DB, uh, S, DBZ. And these are the angels. And this is why I think Dragon Ball Z is a really good show for Christians. It's because they place angels as the highest cast of divine beings as they are depicted in the Bible. And they are good. They're not evil angels or anything like that. They're no fallen angels or anything like that. And above the angels is the Omni King, who is God, or he is the God of everything in uh, this franchise. And he is also a good being like Yahweh, like the Lord. I mean, it doesn't matter how... Uh, I mean, he, uh, what, how powerful a character may be here or anything like that. He has the ability to completely erase them from existence. He is the only being that has the ability to erase things completely from existence. There is no hell or heaven for you once he erases you. Your ass is just gone, and that's the end of it. Okay, and lastly, you have transformations. And... This ties into one's key to some degree, especially for Saiyans, who aren't the only ones to have transformations, mind you. Frieza has a transformation, the androids have transformations, Boo has transformations, and now Piccolo has a transformation. But the most infamous of all the transformations are the Saiyan forms. You have Super Saiyan 1, which Goku used to defeat Frieza. Next, you have Super Saiyan 2, even more powerful than 1. And then... After that, you go beyond when you access Super Saiyan 3. And they're all key intensive. With 3 using the most key up until you get into the Super Saiyan God and the Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan transformations. Which seem to use less key while also boosting the Saiyans power level to God levels. Notice I said God levels. Meaning that even in their God forms, Super Saiyans, they will still get bodied by higher beings like angels. The most powerful of the transformations we've seen thus far is unarguably Ultra Instinct. And this was strong enough to defeat Jirim, the strongest most powerful fighter in the DB multiverse. And we know he's more powerful than all the gods of destruction. So yeah, it's powerful. And it's what I think is Dragon Ball's version or their interpretation of the Holy Spirit. But I'll be getting into that in another video. So uh, that concludes things for now, guys. Signing off.